do it because it was the best possible duck you could ever have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm this is strictly like my I want to show you a couple things that now that I've done and where I, where I did things different, but all based on recipes. That yeah, I love that you, you interchange things. Yeah, you can interchange the meat. You can interchange the fat. Okay, first off, this is a summer sausage that I made with, with bear meat. Mm -hmm. And I cut it for fat because the bear fat, it wasn't a great tasting bear. And I bear trimmed fat's it. not a great fat, is it? It can be. If you got a bear that's been on like blueberries for months, mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. fat is, you can just eat pieces of it. Really? It's, you oh, drink it's so cool. it. I've never yeah. heard no, that. It's, it's phenomenal. This one was a coastal bear, killed in the spring. So it's fat, it just isn't gonna be good, it's gonna be fishy. Mm -hmm. So to do this, you trim it very carefully, just down to lean, mm -hmm. and then cut it with a different kind of fat, so pork or whatever. So this one right here, I cut with some pork. This one right here is bear meat and veal. And this one right here is just kind of a medley of, like if I kill three or four big game animals, I keep bags of just trim. Mm -hmm. So I'll do like asabuco with the shanks, and I might do like blade rolls, but inevitably you wind up with some handful of. Yeah, true. And I just keep adding it in and adding it in. You guys do things in, in, your, in the book, it's all five pound increments, I think. Like right, because that's what we fit in our, our mixing bowl. Also. <laughs> and it was a nice round number. No, it's a great number. So if I realize I have three of these five pound bags, then I'll crank out, you know, whatever. So this is just like a combination of many members of the deer family. And this is the merguez. Cool. Which is like a, like a North African right. thing that the French now eat a lot. That's just a classic. Italian. It's just, I think it's, that's a sweet Italian version. No, I can't remember if that's a spicy or sweet. Baron veal? That's Baron veal. And this is just, is this venison, did you say? This is just, this is various deer. Various deer parts. Yep. All so right. various, various like mule deer, white tail, there might be some caribou in there. And this right here is straight up bear. And then I did the diced pork per your recommendation. But I noticed that you in your book, you're always putting everything into hog middles. Right. Which is that right there. But I did this because people, I don't know, maybe because it's like a mid, but you're from the Midwest. I'm from the Midwest. Like you think like, you'll get like for Christmas, people will give you a summer sausage like this. Right, right. So I went middle road and put that in a collagen casing. I don't even really understand what the hell a collagen casing is. Well, collagen is a, you know, a natural protein that they manufacture and they just make this thin skin that- But it's an animal byproduct. Yeah, yeah, you yeah it's a natural product. In, you can leave it hanging yeah, in the yeah. house for years. Yeah, it's porous and it works the same way. The important part is about what's inside. And then I did the, this I did, not cased, obviously. Good, because you know like people think pieces. that oh, sausage. Well, it's such a hassle. I gotta stuff yeah. it. You don't. You can make it into patties. You know what I found myself doing all the time before I started doing it bulk is is I don't know why, but my kid, he's a year and a half old, does not like like if you give him sausage in a casing, he'll put it in his mouth, and a while later he's always gonna pull it out. Like he can't ID, like <laughs> something doesn't <laughs> click in his head. You know what I mean? So I wound up like always doing case, and then I cut the casing open and pull everything out and then cook it for him and he'll eat the whole thing. Really? Something in his head is like, that is not meant to right. be eaten. Huh. Yeah. And he has no, I mean, he's a year and a half old, he has no preconceived notions about like being gross, you know? Right, I, you know, I've never had bear. Really? Uh, this is my first I, I should've brought you just an actual piece of bear meat because I always tell people like, that I was saying, I was joking earlier that you could put like a dog and a person in here. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be like, basically, it's like summer sausage, you know? Mm -hmm. But you, you probably have a sophisticated enough good. palate to know, maybe. Mm. I mean, is it all right? Can you make this? Yeah. That's your recipe. <laughs> Just not in your case. No cases. wonder it's so damn good. <laughs> I'll do these and smoke them. I know, like, you guys, like, in your book, you'll suggest, you know, to eat it within some period of time for maximum, you know, goodness. Right. But... I'll do this, and then I've tried to put them in my fridge for long periods of time. The only thing that winds up happening is the collagen molds. Really? I don't know how to, I don't know how to prevent that. So mm -hmm. now I put it in a freezer, and what, when it molds, you'll, the, the collagen will get moldy after a few months, mm -hmm. and you pull the casing off, and it'll have stained, the mold will have stained the meat. Hmm. So now I put, I'll make these things and put them in my freezer for a year and thaw them out. And you just kind of bring them back to life by warming them as back as up. As long as they're well wrapped or, or vacuum packed and now they've got the Ziploc vacuum bag. I do saran, tight, tight, tight wrap saran. Then I do wax freezer paper. That'll work, yeah. As long as there's no air touching, that's the thing. But I'm going to try the other one. Yeah, try so it. So that's the summer. Want. This is Italian. So this is just regular cooked sausage. Mm -hmm. I freeze those. I freeze them for a purr and then eat them over. I don't know. It's tasty. Tasty. Where'd you get the recipe again? This wonderful book. <laughs> I can't remember. I think it's called. Okay, so that's a cooked bear sausage. And do you remember which recipe that was from? It was the Italian. You know? But you know what could happen too is I might be digging through my seasonings and realize I don't have something. 
and winging it. Yeah, then I, show, like, I might put something people different should in there. Feel, yes, more and more I think people are feeling like they can wing it and mm -hmm. just use what they have, use their common sense. And these this, are the, this is the Miragaz. This is my favorite recipe, the Miragaz. Really? No one ever knows what the hell Miragaz is. Like, I mean, people do, but a lot of people don't. Mm. Like, other hunters I know, mm. you know, they don't. So they must love a recipe like this because it gives them a new uh, flavor profile to use. Because all everybody ever makes is brats. Mm -hmm. Or they turn it into basically candy. Right. That's one of the problems I think That's that, good. like, where this whole discipline is gone is people making, like, pepper sticks and, like, things that are basically brown sugar and meat. Right. Stuffed into a tube. <laughs> and it winds up being, it's like, turn a whole deer into, like, basically candy. As like, like, that's, yeah, it that's, should be. It should taste like more than sugar, brown sugar and salt. No, they're yeah. doing what the American food processing industry does, and yeah. they shouldn't do that. We salt should go back and, and make it sweet. Yeah. But no, this one's good, man. It's impressive stuff. I'm, mean, you know, I love that you're doing what you're doing. This is just great. Uh, it's such an honor that, you know, something that I did just because I thought, isn't it cool? that we created like duck confit, this rich fatty meat that we poached in fat and then let congeal in fat. And then we could cook it till it was crispy and it was the best possible duck you could ever have. We didn't do it because it was the best possible duck you could ever have. We did it because we had to stay alive. Yeah, it was, it was like the best way to keep a duck. Yeah, and, and you, yet- You put it in a cellar and we that were, was it. We know? were so ingenious that, that we created this amazing product that now we're just returning to uh, by doing stuff like this, by, 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 by making these sausages. I'll say this, that there's somewhere, like you have over 100,000 copies of your book out there. I would say that at least 5,000 are owned by big game hunters. Possibly There's more. nothing out there. There's nothing <laughs> yep. out there. And also, uh, uh, Brian Paulson, my partner in that book, a great chef in Michigan, teaches charcuterie. Uh, he was trained by a hunter, and it's the hunters who are going to bring us back to using the whole animal, preserving the whole animal. Because when you kill an animal, you know what a horrible waste it is to, to lose any of it. I mean, yep. you, took, you took an animal's life. And then these are a lot, a lot of cuts. Like, you can make things that might or normally be marginal. Like when you look at, like if there's a term like gourmet butcher, like if you stop to butcher a roadkill deer, you might do a gourmet butcher where you pull out the loins right. and the back legs. Right. But this is like, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you could take just bits of like shank, bits of shoulder right. strap, anything right. and grind it up in there and you wouldn't know from. And make a really beautiful, beautiful product. And yeah. that's when, that's when you're, you know, that's what a, a true chef does. Transforms humble trim into something really special. Yeah, like there's this. like no, there's no bad part on a deer once you learn how to grind it up, mix it with some various things and put it into tube form. How about eyeballs? I haven't tried it. Yeah. I don't, there's I no eyeballs. <laughs> I could see Cap in the end of each of my sausages with an eyeball though, man. Just like one little, so he's looking out at each end, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was great, and it's good to meet you. Good to be here, thanks. And uh, and I'm going to continue to plug your book. Oh well, good luck. And I have no show. financial stake in this book whatsoever. <laughs> I'm plugging this. This is strictly like my admiration for a book that helps you become a better chef, and being a better chef is being a better hunter in my mind. Oh, uh, thank you. Well said. Thank you so much. All right. Appreciate it.